And this was kind of their setup here. So they use like a, I guess like a medium sized injection mold machine. It's a, a Cincinnati Millicron RoboShot. And they printed their molds using high temp resin. And they only had to print one half because, you know, these mass traps are flat. And the other half is just like a steel plate that abuts up against that high temp resin mold. And the actual injection shot material is a low viscosity polypropylene. It's also called high melt flow. It's so low viscosity that it flows almost like water. And so these were some of the conditions that they found uh, after, you know, fine tuning this process. This is what they found. And what you'll notice is there on that bottom image, you can see that the average cycle time was 30 seconds. And anyone who's worked in injection molding for a while knows 30 seconds is kind of a long time for a cycle time. But the reason they had to go that route is because the mold is, a, you know, it's made of plastic, right? It's not made out of metal. And as such, it's not able to conduct heat away as easily. And so there's a lot of heat retention there. And so they have to leave the part in the mold for a little bit longer. Um, in fact, Form Labs even recommends taking like some some compressed air and, and using that just to help expedite the cooling process. But all said, Brascom was able to get, on average, 15 shots per mold. Um, I think they were able to get up to like 2,500 at one point, but typically, you know, right around 1,500 what they they were kind of seeing there. All right, so with that wrapped up, let's talk about the ideal Form Labs resins to use for your injection mold. So. At number one, you want to look at Rigid 10K. And if you don't have that, uh, a worthy substitute is that high temp resin. And then down at the bottom, use Gray Pro kind of as a last resort. And the reason we order it in that, in that way is because of parameters like heat deflection temperature and tensile modulus. So you want to be able to resist the high temperatures of the molten plastic, uh, but also have that high tensile modulus so you can, you can handle high pressures during the, the injection process. Now we had looked at, uh, with Brascom's case, we looked at kind of that medium sized injection mold machine, but there are smaller variations that you can use, uh, such as these uh, bench top injection mold machines here. Uh, so they're, they're a lot more cost effective. Uh, but the only thing you have to consider, so uh, one thing I'll draw your attention to is like the three on the left here, those are a manual injection mold. So that's, that's, you, you know, uses a, a lever process. And then the two on the right are pneumatic. But you can see that, you know, these are really kind of smaller. They, they don't really allow large molds to be fitted in there. So if you don't really have access to something like this or access to, you know, a more expensive injection mold machine, um, then you can always use something like a syringe or use a gravity pour method. And this is actually what we did. And we're going to show our example here in just a moment. But in situations like these, you don't necessarily have to shell out the money for more expensive resins like that Rigid 10K or the high temp resin, which are engineering grade resins. In situations like this, you can use some of the more standard form labs resins like what we have listed here, black, white, gray resins, which are like your traditional standard resins, but also your clear and your draft resins as well.